Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Dr. William Snublin coming to you from With One Accord Church Ministries with a sort of a more or less warning and exhortation concerning the events that are going on or just, just transpired this very day. As most of you probably know, uh, today, May 6th, uh, Charles is crowned King of England and, uh, you know, the United Kingdom in Westminster Abbey in London. And you might think, well, what's that got to be a warning about? Well, there's a lot going on here, and I, I don't want to try and repeat things that I've said in earlier videos, but there's a lot to be concerned about concerning, you know, the royal family and where it has been taking England in the last century or so, and most especially in the last couple of decades. So, so I'm saying be afraid, be very afraid, and remember that Yeshua is our only king. I don't care if you're in England or Scotland or Ireland or America, Yeshua is our king. Everybody else is a false pretender. So that being said, I want to read something. Uh, this is a statement about the ceremony after the fact from Fox News, and it says this, that this was one of many faiths and languages to signify the new king as a unified figure, unifying figure in the United Kingdom. For the first time, a monarch was crowned in a ceremony that included the active participation of other faiths, other than the Church of England, Buddhist, Hindu, Jewish, Muslim, and Sikh leaders took part in various parts of the coronation. The Archbishop of Canterbury's office described it as an act of Christian worship that reflected contemporary society. The ceremony also featured female bishops as well as hymns and prayers sung in Welsh, Scottish, Gaelic, and Irish Gaelic as well as English. The king wanted the ceremony to reflect the, reflect the whole of the United Kingdom and be representative of any backgrounds and faiths. He wants to set the tone right from the start, said some fellow named Felton Spence. Don't know who he is. But anyway, that sounds all noble and wonderful and all that, but it hides a lot of darkness, and we're going to get into that. I mean, first of all, in my earlier videos about two months ago, at least now, I did videos two rather lengthy videos on the Devils of Windsor, and we'll put links to those down below. I don't want to repeat too much of what's in those, but I just want to highlight a few things in the light of what's happening today. Um, first of all, this, of course, this is a huge media event, just like the coronation of his mother was back in, I think it was 1952 or 1953. Um, big deal. And, you know, there were thousands of people there and others watching on TV all over the world, I'm sure. I chose not to watch it, but I picked up glimpses of it. And, and you know, a few things I want to comment on before I get into the broader issues. Number one is, dating back many centuries, there's this, been idea, this idea that, that you anoint the king of England, that the Archbishop of Canterbury does this. And of course, this goes all the way back to the Bible. There's nothing per se wrong with that. I mean, you know, like we see Saul, pardon me, Samuel, you uh, anointed David to be a king. And, and that was carried on even way back in the days of Israel. So so that's, that's okay, as long as you kind of understand the, there's a spiritual component to all this. And the fact that this anointing took place in secret behind this screen, this very elaborate screen that was set up, uh, it was created by craftspeople over there in Britain. Um, and nobody could see it except presumably the Archbishop of Canterbury and his immediate, you know, assistants there. What were they hiding? I mean, supposedly they had this olive oil from uh, from the Mount of Olives over in Jerusalem, and that the, they had they take a golden flask and a little golden spoon, and they take it and they anoint him on his head, and his chest, and on his hands. And I mean, that doesn't sound like something that you need to necessarily hide from everybody, but they did. And of course, that that invites speculation. 
what else may have been done. We don't know. But knowing how for centuries the crown has been steeped in Freemasonry, one can't help but wonder if there was something going on of a Masonic nature. Um, the funny thing is, too, is that this, this screen itself was this kind of childlike looking um, thing of a tree with uh, 12 birds in it and angels flying around with trumpets and all that. I mean, it, it didn't look like anything very elaborate. And at the base of the tree was Charles's, you know, symbol, you know, the, the, they have this thing where you, you know, you have the letter C and the little letter R, you know, for Charles Rex, Charles King. And then at the bottom was this banner which read, all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well. I mean, what, what does that mean? I mean, it sounds like a nice sentiment. What does it mean, all manner of thing shall be well? I mean, I'm sure they know English well enough over there in England that, that it should be things. So, you know, all of this stuff, it just, it's just so, so weird. And understanding the background, and I'm going to talk more about this in a minute, the fact that, that Charles is really into ecology and really into saving the planet and the green movement and all of that. I mean, he's just huge into that. He's one of the, he's probably one of the most powerful people in the world that's pushing it and has been pushing it for decades. I mean, his father, Prince Philip, was into it too. So this has been going on for a generation. So I don't know if there's some secret meaning in that rather odd phrase. I mean, yeah, I hope all is well too, but you know, I'd rather have everything be under the, the banner of Yeshua than have everything be well. As we'll see here, like the, the statement I just read is a cringing example of what Christian writer Gary North called political polytheism. The fact that, that we, that if we want to honor, you know, the idea, well, in America, we, of course, have the First Amendment, and in Britain, they don't, but they, they're obviously being very pluralistic, very multicultural. That's the big thing now. And they're basically treating all religions as equally valid, and that's a lie. There's nothing true about that, and there's nothing good about the idea of, you know, Muslims and Jews and Anglicans and Sikhs and whatever other people might have been there praying together. That is not scriptural. You know, it says in Ephesians chapter 5, we've quote this verse a lot, but it says in verse 11, having no, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness and rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. And all of these other religions are works of darkness. I mean, you know, even, even Judaism, for all of its goodness, denies Yeshua. And there can be no fellowship with these, with these other faiths. As much as they want to, you know, create this kumbaya, let's all get around the campfire and sing. No, that's not scriptural, and it just is one more indication that, that, that Charles is not a Christian monarch in any sense of the word. We're going to get more into that in a moment. The thing is, there's all this tradition around, and I don't want to belabor that, but I mean, I understand why they're doing it. I mean, like the crown that he's wearing is called King St. Edward's crown. It goes all the way back to, I guess, 1661. Um, that was when England was Christian. England is not really Christian today. Um, I mean, he, he and his mother, Queen Elizabeth, have presided over a country which basically started out as, as pretty much Christian. And in a matter of, and during her reign, which was 70 years long, basically the country is sunk into an abyss a multicultural swill. I mean, right now, there are fewer Christians in England, according to a recent poll, than there are non-believers or Muslims. There are actually more Muslims than Christians now in England. 
And I'm just going to leave. I mean, I, I'm not trying to make something out of that. I'm just saying that, that basically the gospel has been quenched in that country. And Christians are persecuted. Um, I read an article where a Christian pastor in England was arrested for standing in a crowd and crying out, there is no king but Jesus. That's kind of scary uh, because he's right. There is no king but Jesus. All the rest are pretenders. So, you know, there's, there's danger here lurking in the midst of all of this tradition and pageantry and, you know, all this stuff. So, okay, he's got this crown and he's also given this orb. Uh, it's called the Orb of the Sovereign. And it's basically this big golden sphere with a cross on top. And of course, all this stuff is full of jewels and and gold and all of that. And, and I, I guess that for over a hundred years, the, the crown, the St. Edward's crown had this real expensive Kohinoor diamond, which I guess was the largest diamond in the world. And it was stolen basically from India. And finally, out of respect, I don't know what happened to it, but they, they didn't put it in the crown. Uh, they put a bunch of other diamonds in instead. Who knows where they got those from? They probably stole them from somebody else. I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound spiteful here, but, you know, I, I guess I am just so tired of hearing about the royal family and all this royal soap opera stuff. Anyhow, there's important spiritual things going on here. This is a magical ritual. The, it, it is an act of ceremonial magic, just as much as if these people were in a magic circle, you know, waving around swords and, you know, incense and all of that, uh, because it's not really Christian. I mean, it can't be Christians if they're, you know, there's Sikhs and Muslims and Buddhists running around, you know, participating in it. And of course, Charles, you know, when, when his mother, back in the early 50s, was crowned, she was proclaimed to be the head of the Church of England. The sovereign has been the head of the Church of England since back in the days of Henry VIII, which, of course, is centuries ago. And she was declared to be the defender of the faith. You know, that's great. But now, Charles has made it very clear he wants to be the defender of faiths, plural. So no longer is there one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father Almighty. No, 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 we can't have that, even though it's right here in the Bible. No, we can't have that. So he's the defender of faith, which sounds so much more politically correct. So, you know, this orb, to get back to that, I mean, it's, it symbolizes the sovereignty of, of the king of England over his realm, king or queen, and then the sovereignty, supposedly, of Christ over the king. But the problem is that's not the case anymore. I mean, it may have been the case with Elizabeth, bless her soul, but it's not the case anymore. It's another lie. And, you know, we have to ask, is Charles even a Christian? So when he was made king this morning, he became the de facto sovereign over 56 countries that make up the Commonwealth. That's a lot of countries. I mean, that's like a third of all, I think there's something like 195 countries in the world that are recognized. So that's like almost a third of the countries in the world he has spiritual authority over. And if you understand how that works in the terms of spiritual warfare, you need to be on your toes, especially if you're in one of those countries. I mean, the most obvious ones are, of course, England and Northern Ireland and Canada and Australia and, and you know, obviously 50 or so others that are mostly rather small. But so he has an enormous amount of spiritual power, and this has been invested in him by someone. And I dare say it's not Yeshua. Because Yeshua is not going to, or you know, honor somebody like that, who who denies the uniqueness of Calvary, who denies the soul saving power of Yeshua and His cross and His resurrection. No, He might go through the motions and have this. I mean, let's face it. Even the last two or three 
Archbishop of Canterbury have all been a bunch of heretics. I mean, you know, they have, they ordain homosexuals, they ordain lesbians, they have, I mean, it's just, it's just a total mess. To such an extent, they actually have a splinter group. I mean, it's, I think it's in America and in Africa that is split off from the Anglican Church over this kind of apostasy because they won't have it and good for them. But, you know, so that's a big problem spiritually. And, and again, I said this is one of these other videos I did on the royal family. But if you are in one of these countries, I strongly, and I don't mean to, maybe to be unpatriotic, but you need to renounce Charles as your liege lord and sovereign, quote unquote. Another thing is, he, he is kind of literally the high priest of this eco-nut green gospel. And I've got to give Sheila Zielinski credit for that. She wrote a book, I think it was a year ago or so, called The Green Gospel. And that's a great term for this whole ecological fanaticism that we've been laboring under for the last seven or eight years, you know. And he is, he is one of the main, he's certainly the most powerful now proponent of, you know, climate change and all the necessary things we need to do to stop global warming or whatever the heck they're calling it now. And, you know, additionally, he is, you know, as sovereign, he is now the head of the Order of the Garter. And I, I talked about this somewhat in one of my previous videos, but it, it's a witchcraft slash free Masonic order. It's the highest Masonic order in the world, and he's now the head of it. So if, if you're a Mason and you needed any more reasons to get out of Masonry, that should be one of them. But um, because Masonry is rotten to the core, and I'm going to talk a little more about that in a few minutes, but I don't want to make this too long. But again, this is the, the he is the head of this Order of the Garter, which is basically goes back almost a thousand years, and it, it basically creates this dual thing in the British monarchy, where the 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 King of England is both swearing allegiance, quote unquote, to Christianity and to paganism or witchcraft whenever he's made a king. I mean, that was going on nearly a thousand years ago, and maybe that was what was going on behind the screen. I don't know. Or it may have been done in secret. But I know it's going on. I mean, it, I mean, I, it went on with Queen Elizabeth, and I have no reason to think of anything that's probably worse now with her, with her son Charles. Okay, now you gotta understand this about Freemasonry. I've done many videos and DVDs on Masonry, but you need to understand that the secret core, the secret sacrament of Freemasonry involves sexuality and pedophilia. Masons, and I'm not saying all Masons are pedophiles, but a lot of the high-level ones are, just as we're now finding out that, that high-level people in both Britain and America and probably other countries as well are, are all pedophiles. They all you know, are craving sex with children at best. That's the best thing you can say about these people because some of them eat the children. I mean, literally, I mean, yeah, forbid. And they have this twisted idea that by doing that, they can live longer, that they can live forever because these young children, whether they're toddlers or whatever, they have years and years of life in their blessed little bodies well, I don't need to paint a picture. It's sick and it's twisted and it's horrible and Charles is up to his eyeballs in it. You know, there there are so many things wrong with this and, and it's like pretty obvious that, that the monarchy is trying to have a foot in two worlds. The world of paganism and Freemasonry and the world of, of at least superficial Christianity. And you can't do that. You know, Yeshua said no one can serve two masters. He will either hate the one and love the other, or he will despise the one and follow the other. I mean, and that makes perfectly good sense, but that's what these people are trying to do, and no wonder they're going crazy. Now, in the course of my research, 
I, I mentioned earlier the, the wonderful work of Tim Cohen in his book, The Antichrist and a Cup of Tea. But there's another guy out there. Uh, I think his name is Craig Bong, B-O-N-G, believe it or not. That's his name. And, and he's done a lot of interesting work on the recent stuff that's come out. Um, he demonstrates the fact that if you look at the invitation, these fancy invitations were sent out, because as you probably know, only a few hundred people were invited to, to go into the Abbey, Westminster Abbey, and be a part of this thing. And there's all these flowers, and it, it's very elegant, but then at the bottom, and I'm, I'm gonna put it up on the screen, there's this rather prominent image right in the center of the green man. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, the green man is a vegetation, vegetation god of pagan Britain. And he's basically like Pan. And I assume most of you have heard of, you know, the great god Pan, quote unquote. And he's a demonic, um, pantheistic figure. Now, what is this? thing doing on an invitation to a supposedly Christian ritual. Now, mind you, in this thing that was put out by Fox News that I read at the start of this, there was no mention there of there being any druid, druids invited or any witches invited. And I find that remarkable because I bet there were druids and witches there. They just probably didn't want to make a thing out of it. But here they have, they basically have the image of Pan, the image of the horned god of witchcraft right on the invitation. Now, the other thing, and I had never seen this before, but the, um, this, um, fellow Craig Bong, he, um, pointed out the fact that Charles has this signet that he's worn, I don't know, maybe since he was a teenager, a ring, and it's also kind of like his, one of his personal seals. They have all kinds of these seals and everything. But this one, it, it's, um, it's basically three ostrich feathers, one in the middle and two coming off either side, and, and placed in a coronet, a little crown. And underneath that is his motto, which is in German, Ich dien, which means I serve. Now that sounds real noble and all that, doesn't it? But he points out, and I'm going to put this image up on the screen, that when he was speaking to, I think it was some part of the World Economic Forum, um, a few couple of years ago, they put this a stylized version of this up on the screen uh, behind him. You know, they have these huge screens now for these events. And it was divided up. Each of these plumes was turned into rainbows of light. And each one had six, six, six coming out of it, and you'll, you'll see the image. I hope you can put it up there. And it's like, there it is, you know. And I, I, I know I've kind of been on the fence about this. Is Charles the Antichrist? I don't know. I certainly think he is an Antichrist. And he certainly is positioning himself to be the Antichrist. And, you know, we don't know. This is all in, in the hands of Yeshua, you know, but the fact of the matter is he is the documented leader. And again, I talked about this in earlier videos of the Great Reset, of these globalization initiatives. You know, this thing you will eat bugs and you will be happy and you will not own anything. He's the major force behind that. He's bigger in all this than this weird, creepy Bond villain guy Schwab. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... You know, the other problem with Charles is, you know, uh, he had, he had now has, as king, the political clout to push all of this along even further. Additionally, he has documented friendships with some of the most notorious pedophiles in all of England. And this Seville guy, and again, I talk about this in an earlier video, I'm not going to go into it, but, you know, the guy hangs out with some very creepy people or at least he used to. Buckingham Palace is full of confirmed bachelors, which is a fancy way of saying they're sodomites. Um, and in the midst of all of this, we have to ask, with looking back on Princess Diana and why she died, 
Why did she have to die? Did she know things about Charles that were just too dangerous to be let out? And I mean, this is all very conspiracy theory type stuff. But, and, and again, we did a whole video about the right of the divine king and Diana's death, which I believe was a murder. I believe she was killed uh, partially for political convenience and maybe because she knew more than, than, the, than the monarchy wanted to get out. But I will just end with this and I'll, I'll, I'll close with uh, uh, some thoughts and a prayer. But I just want to remind you, I talked about this in earlier videos, that since the time, the last few years of Victoria's reign and on to the Edwardian era and in the Georgian era with, you know, George V and so on, all the way up to Elizabeth, lots of little children have been disappearing. Hundreds of little children have been disappearing under Elizabeth's reign. We don't know where they went. A lot of them were Aboriginal children in Australia. A lot of them were native Canadian children from up in the western part of um, Canada, which is both those countries, of course, are under the monarchy. They're part of the Commonwealth. Where do these children go? What was done to them? I mean, nothing can be proven at this point, but I do know there were actually warrants out for the Queen's arrest in, I forget, it was one of the provinces of Canada, it might have been British Columbia or Manitoba, I can't recall, for kidnapping these children because they just vanished. And of course, they were mostly orphan, you know, native Canadian children, so nobody cared. But it's a tragedy. And this is a bloody throne that's been built on blood and violence and pillage and thuggery and drug dealing for centuries, for centuries. And it's nothing to celebrate. It's nothing to get all gooey-eyed about and teary-eyed And I'm sorry if you're English and you're watching this and I'm offending you. I don't mean to because this isn't about you. I love the English people. I've been over there. I've ministered in England and in Scotland and, and right in London. Um, I love the English people. But your monarchy stinks to high heaven and has done for at least a century and probably more like 500 years. So I exhort you to please, if you're in anyhow involved with the British monarchy, if you're one of these 56 nations that are part of the, um, the Commonwealth, then pray and renounce it. And if you're an American, and I said this last time we did a video on this subject, but I need to emphasize it. If you're all just goo-eyed and just enamored totally of, oh, the royal family, oh, I can't wait to hear what's going on, you know, stop that. Yeshua is your king. These people are at best a bunch of empty-headed twits, and at worst they could be monsters, at least the senior members of the royal family. Obviously, I'm not talking about the young people. So, in any event, renounce your allegiance, whether it's political or whether it's just a matter of, oh, you're so fascinated with them as media celebrities. You need to renounce that and declare your allegiance to Yeshua, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Glory, hallelujah. And that needs to be done because this is idolatry of a sort. You're... You're putting these people with feet of clay like Charles and Elizabeth or whoever on a pedestal that they do not deserve to be on. Again, we have no king but Yeshua. And I'll just close with a brief prayer. Father, thank you that we have a king that is good, that is perfect, that is all-powerful. Thank you that he watches over our lives and the lives of our children. And Father, we just declare our allegiance anew to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, as our only King, our only Lord, our only Sovereign, and to Him alone we owe allegiance. And Father, 
we do pray right now in Yeshua's name that, that you would remove the talons of the British monarchy from the hearts of everybody who's listening to this video. We pray, Father, that you would take the sword of the Spirit and the battle axe of, you know, Elohim and just shatter any chains of darkness or deception. And I'd be holding any person, whether they're in the Commonwealth of the UK or whether they're in America or wherever, if they're, if they're being held in any kind of bondage or glamour to these royals, that you would just shatter that power over them forever. And instead, Father, release them to, to serve you, the only true Elohim, in Yeshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. And Father, I pray that you would, instead of letting this be a, the open doorway into a new world of hellish stuff spewing forth in the British throne, that instead, that you would just stomp on it, Father, that you would crush their plans into the dust with the power of the cross of Calvary, and let this be instead a time of a birth of freedom and Messiah, and a time when the powers of darkness would be crushed, and a time when the doors of evil would be slammed in the face of the devil, that he would be locked in and not be able to trub trouble us who serve thee, the true and living Elohim. And finally, Father, we pray your protection upon everybody who's watching this video. We pray that you would bless them and protect them and empower them and embolden them to be powerful witnesses to Christ, to Messiah, to his cross and the saving power of his shed blood. Because we are his children. And help us to act like it and not be running after celebrities, whether they're royal celebrities or Hollywood celebrities or whatever. Help us to be true to you, Father, in all things, to be focused on you and your truth and your gospel. And we pray for all of these things in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Amen. Vimru. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Didn't mean to make it this long, but here we are. And I just give Elohim all the glory. I thank you for listening. Please share this. Uh, especially if you have friends that you know are Anglophiles, you know, they're really, really into England and the royal family and all of that. And please pray for us. We are really, again, in, in the thick of spiritual warfare, as you can imagine. Please share this. Please subscribe if you have not already done so. We do pray that you would pray about supporting the work of this ministry. We're going to put up a, a slide on the screen that will show you we have PayPal, we have uh, text to give, and we also have Zelle. So um, at our website, you will see down below too. So please support us with your prayers and if possible with your offerings. Thank you. And I pray that you are richly blessed in all that you do throughout the coming week and all through your lives in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMoshiach. Shalom, shalom.